Hey guys, God bless. Um, I've got another video today. It's called The Ladder Rain. Um, literally just got this kind of message today uh, to do a video on it. Um, I may be rushing it. I'm not sure. Um, I felt obligated to get it out as soon as possible. If I come across any further information or something I need to add, I'll either add it to the folder in the Google Drive or I'll do another video on it. Um, but I did feel like uh, an urgency to get this out today or tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying anything timing wise. I'm not going there. But it just it felt kind of like get out what I know. And if I have to, I can add on to it later. Um, we're going to start off with a video from Dabu7. I don't think I'll get a... Hopefully don't get a copyright strike from old Dabu. But um, anyway, I'm going to play this video for you. And uh, we'll get started. All right. And thank you, Dabu, for this video and your work that you do. This is Dabu 7. We have many states and cities declaring water emergencies and saying that they have less than a couple of months worth of fresh water or drinking water left. Now, when we look at the situation, what's going on out west here in the United States, Lake Mead, Lake Powell, mm kind of at the center of this whole thing because that's where a lot of the water that is consumed comes from out in this region. Now, what feeds this is the Colorado River. And they're saying that something has to give here, that this area is due to collapse totally down into Deadpool if neither side blinks here in terms of reducing their use and taking the water out of this area. Now, a week ago, Lake Mead's water level dropped to historic lows, and it continues day by day to just keep on dropping. Now, they're saying increasing flow from the Colorado River would help replenish Lake Mead as well as Lake Powell, which also generates hydroelectricity. So we're not talking about just water here. We're talking about the power that comes along with it. And they're saying that this is a basin-wide water supply crisis that is occurring and that something has to give immediately or they're gonna hit systematic failure. Basically, when you hit Deadpool and this thing's dry, it's done. They've talked about sending the Army Corps of Engineers out to the Mississippi and tapping into that or the Colorado, a branch off of that somehow to swing it back out west but that's all just talk at this point, and that would probably severely cripple the Mississippi River and everything downstream from it. So this is going to catch up to the Midwest and the East Coast one way or another. Someone seems to be making sure of that. Follow me over on Dapu777. Make sure to hit that subscribe button over there. That's where I'm going live Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, talking about stuff like this in greater detail on the live shows. You'll find links below in the description. Much love, y'all. All right. He does a good job, so um, appreciate that that news. Um, so that sets up the stage here, what we're going to talk about, and that is pretty much like out west. And um, I, I talked in my last video in Y88 uh, discusses rivers, generally the, the Colorado and the Gunnison, and representing that Y uh, which is cancer uh, that we've made so many connections with in the last video. Uh, but the Colorado and the Gunnison River link up at Grand Junction. Uh, the Ruddy, the Colorado River literally means Ruddy River, uh, which goes back obviously to Adam, David, uh, all those different uh, uh, Strong's words. It's, it's in the Bible, the word Ruddy. Um, he, it's mentioned when they first uh, make, make David or anoint David or see David when Samuel first sees him and anoints him. And it's also mentioned when the Philistines see him uh, for the first time and uh, on the battlefield. So just an interesting uh, connection there with Ruddy and the Colorado River. The Gunnison River or Gune in Greek or Gyn or Gynecology or Gyn as in a queen uh, is the Woman River. Uh, these two rivers, they form up at Grand Junction. They come together as the Colorado River and ultimately make their way down to Fort Meade, or Fort Meade, I'm sorry, Lake Meade in Arizona. 
both the names Arizona and Phoenix are tied to this study. And we'll get into that here in just a second, but something that you should definitely pay attention to. Um, as he said in the video, there's so this isn't just isolated with this river. Out west is horrible right now for uh, dried up rivers and lake beds and dams and everything else that's going on. You heard him talk about Lake Powell. I know there's many other other dams out there that are uh, controlling the resources of water downstream. I do know or I'm pretty sure that the Colorado is the most prominent and it supplies power to over 40 million people uh, according to their website, yeah, Lake Mead website. Um, so anyway, we're going to get started kind of on the biblical connection here and we'll kind of get back to this a little bit later. Okay. Um, so Arizona, this whole arid area is, we're going to label it as the wilderness. Okay. It's the dry ground. Um, I seek for you in a dry, thirsty land. Um, the Lord showed me that when I was born again in Psalms that I was looking for him in a dry, thirsty land. I found him in Iraq. Um, and, uh, you know, so all those little things, you know, brought me to this precipice, this point. And so as I look back on my own walk, I'm seeing how he's, you know, I was born in Grand Junction, you know, so I'm seeing all of these connections and it's kind of, kind of overwhelming a little bit for me. Um, and it's, it's really very humbling, but anyway, uh, so if I I'm speaking from what I know he has shown me. I put it that way. Okay. So anyway, out west, arid area, arid area, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, it's arid. It's a wilderness. It's the wilderness in the Bible. It This is all taking place uh, in the spirit and it's happening on our earth. And it's, it's showing us exactly what's going on with the people. Because the people are technically the earth. They're that that dry water sack, that 88, H88. It's that water bag. There's no water. They're empty of the living water. Okay? Okay, sorry. We'll get back to this. So anyway, Spanish word for Arizona was arid zone. Arizona, uh, meaning the wilderness. So we have these people uh, in this valley of decision. And that's the multitudes. The multitudes are always uh, the many generations. Jesus fed the multitudes with fish and bread. There was 5,000 of them. Um, they're represented by Pisces in the heavens. Um, they're the ones that are on the fence. They're in this, you know, I want Jesus some of the time, but not all the time. And it's it's kind of like a um, valley uh, that they're that they're in. They don't know exactly what decision they want to completely make. And we know in Joel uh, 3.14, it says, Multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near. All right, so this time is coming for him to come on the scene. And they're going to get caught in this valley of decision where they shouldn't be. The sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdrew from their shining. All right, this is the day of the Lord happening. All right, come into, enter into thy chamber, shut the doors about thee until the indignation be overpassed. Uh, he showed me a dream of this occurring. And um, uh, anyway, so this this time frame is coming up. So who are the multitudes in the Valley Decision? Well, Revelation tells us okay, exactly who they are. And they are, in my words, not the Bible's words, but we're soon going to see this, that they are the phoenixes. All right. They rise from the ashes. And I'm going to show you how this fits. So lo and behold, a uh, great multitude, which no man could number, all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues, stood before the throne of the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. This is a great multitude that no man can number. We know the 144,000 can be numbered. Okay, so that throws them out of who this is. This is a great multitude, and we know that they are clothed with robes because they've washed themselves in tribulation. Okay, we're going to see that here in a second. But we're going to focus on the palms in their hands. This gets really cool. So the palms in their hands, palms, easy one, goes back to the word phoenix. All right? They are the phoenixes under derivation of a palm tree. Palm. Palm tree, date palm. Okay? 
Phoenix, P-H-O-I-N-I-X, in their hands, okay? So we have this Greek word hand. Most of us think of it as something to clutch with, some, you know, potty part member, whatever. But it says here from the base of 5494 and 5490, and it pretty much just tells us the hollowness of grasping, to grasp something, instrument, hand, uh, by the help of an agency or by one uh, means of by anyone um, applied to God by symbolizing his might, activity, and power. Does the Greek word hand, G5495, tell us any more about this group of people? The hand grasps things, just as a hand here is grasping a palm branch. But what did the holder of the palm branch grasp a hold of? What did he latch on to? to grasp this palm branch to be in this place what did he latch on to okay keep that in mind it also says by the help of an agency of anyone by means of anyone applied by god symbolizing his might and power the real answers come from the base numbers or the base words with the numbers 5494 and 5490 and that is essentially a storm the pouring of rain by implication the rainy season i.e. winter tempest foul weather so they've grasped onto the teaching of jesus christ they've grasped onto and received the teachings of jesus and the living water not the churches See, right now they're in this wilderness, okay? They're in this dry, thirsty land. And there is, their soil's not prepared right now to receive the seed of God, the word of God, okay? They have to be prepared to do that. And this preparation has gone on and on and on and on since, you know, however long you want to go back, 2012, 2010, 7, whatever. And they've come into this we've come to this precipice point where they are on the hinge of wanting to dive into the deep end of the pool with Jesus Christ but there's just something they're still blocked in they're still under this this darkness spell if you will that won't take them an inch further yeah they know covid's a hoax or wh whatever they want to label it as who 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 knows they know the government's evil they know that they're trying to, you know, they see all the headlines that, you know, people are buying farms and selling them to China. I mean, they see all these stupid things that's happening, but they just haven't quite jumped in the deep end. And they're right on that edge. And this is what's going to take them to that edge. And either they're going to jump in or jump out, or jump out of the way. And if they go the other way, we know what that is. Okay. The mark of the beast system the beast world war order new world order or they're going to want to know what the heck have i missed who is god for real because the church has not helped us who are these people running around healing people you know all of this stuff going on so the the real answers come from the base of this so the dam is blockading the flow of the water into the wilderness okay that's what's blocking the end also the, the lack of the water but that dam is what's blockading it okay and this is where you have this chasm there's this impassibility this gulf they just can't make that jump okay but they will make that jump and this goes back to teaching we're going to show you that here in a minute so this is all spiritual symbolism the multitudes received the teachings of jesus the living water okay not from the churches but from people this will begin once the latter rains begin that are spoken of in Job. So who are these people? They came out of great tribulation. Right now we're in birthing pains. Okay, these are pains. We are being pained to be delivered. The great tribulation is a different ball game. Okay, that's when the fallen show up. That's when the beast shows up. That's when the wars at our doorstep shows up. That's when they're taking people to camps and that's the great trials of this whole mess of this great tribulation this is the final straw to make a decision okay 
They are they with these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and words and made themselves clean, all right, through the blood of the Lamb. They stood before the throne of God to serve him day and night in his temple. Okay. He sits on the throne and they shall dwell among them, they shall hunger no more, thirst no more. This why it's this gives you a clue here as to the time frame. Right now, are we hungry? No. Are we thirsty? No. But during this time frame of great tribulation, they will be hungry, they will thirst, but they won't evermore once they are with the Lord. Okay. Um, no heat, no sunlight. For the Lamb of God which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. He shall lead them to the fountains of waters and wipe all the, way to, uh, all the tears away from their eyes. Storm, rain, rainy season, hands. Okay, don't forget that. Palm branch, the symbol of victory, peace, and eternal life. The palm, Phoenix, was sacred to Mesotopia, okay, represented immortality, awarded to the victorious athletes. Know you not that you run a race? But one receives the prize, so run that you may obtain the prize. All right. Palm Branch was awarded to victorious athletes. Verit, victory of the spirit over the flesh. Okay, Palm Branch. Right now, the Colorado River. Lake Powell, Lake Mead, many other places. This also includes both Oroville and the Hoover Dam are sitting dangerously on low water. <clears throat> I learned a new term the other day called Deadpool, meaning if you don't know, the lake is so low that there's not enough water to flow over or through the dam to generate power downstream. Lake Mead is practically inches away from becoming Deadpool if it does not rain soon. These are just a few headlines concerning the area. Actual art articles are saved on the Google Drive. So the Platte River. So it's not just limited to a couple rivers, guys. The the, the Colorado River, uh, I mean, in the state of Colorado alone, there's well over 20 main rivers that feed the Colorado. And that doesn't include creeks or a bunch of ones that I missed. Uh, I looked at them yesterday and was kind of Google searching them. And um, they, they all come from the mountains in Colorado and feed right into the, or I'm sorry, from the mountains of Colorado feed into the Colorado River. So these are just, again, some headlines. Colorado River Basin's farms stunted by mega drought. Uh, they sounded alarms about the Colorado River crisis, but warnings went unheeded. Uh, this is a picture, satellite picture. Um, 40 million people who depend on the Colorado River will change. Um, it doesn't look like too bad, but if you look up here, it is super dry. Millions of risk at power and water shortages as two of the nation's largest reservoirs on the brink of Deadpool. I thought it was funny that the UN warns us of that. Thanks, UN. Lake Mead water level falls to 1040 uh, Deadpool. Uh, interesting coordinates number with 1040 if you want to look it up. I forgot to include it. I'd have to go back and look. I think I included it in the folder, though. Uh, let's see. This is interesting. <laughs> so, Virgin River. Uh, if you go to Google Earth and you pull up everything, the Virgin River actually flows into Lake Mead with the Colorado River. So the Colorado's on one side. So let's pull it up real quick, just, just real quick. Okay, so here's the Virgin River. It's kind of hard to see, but it kind of comes down. It starts up here. By this place called St. George and comes down. But the Virgin River comes through here, goes down by this Highway 15 and then this Highway 70 into Lake Mead. Colorado, this is the Grand Canyon, comes through here and dumps out in here. So there's another why if, you know, you want to look at it that way. Um, 
and then down here is the dam, I believe. Yeah, it's right by this highway. Right there's the Hoover Dam. So it does form a huge Y, which is kind of interesting. Um, if you look at it that direction. Oh, the Lord also just told me um, back to our, I'll, I'll explain that here. Just keep Grand Canyon in mind. Um, but here's our Y. <laughs> so um, kind of interesting too. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd bring that up. It, it's it's undeniable that this is what the Lord has shown us. I mean, Virgin River, um, you know, it, it's the the Gyn, the Gunnison, it's all it's all there. Now I didn't know this, but there's a TV show called Virgin River, and this was headlined today. And you can see the date, August seventh. And she was quoted in saying this. I've never seen this show. I know nothing about it. But she says a time jump will be needed soon. Which, of course, we're all waiting for 88 with the time jump. So, anyway, I thought that was interesting. So, I included that as well in the, in the uh, folder and, and here. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So, oh, yeah, back up here real quick. This chasm, the Lord said, is that canyon right here. Chasm to form an obsolete, uh, agape, yawn, chasm, vacancy, impassable gulf, Colorado River, the, the actual um, Grand Canyon. Okay, so here we go. So on the 5th or 6th, I think it was, um, I woke up hearing in my spirit, Oroville. Now, I've included this in the study. I don't know if this means anything, but I've been watching it very closely. Um, Oroville, if you don't know, um, is a small town in California near the town of Paradise. It's pretty close, probably 20 miles apart. These towns are nestled in the Sierra Mountains. I have a folder on Oroville, if you want to look at it, on the Google Drive. Um, I think it holds a significant meaning to prophecy. And here's my opinion. My opinion is the dams, especially the Hoover and Oroville, um, is what's containing the birthing of the kingdom. Like a water breaking forth, the birth of a child comes shortly after, which we discussed extensively. The Oroville Lake, which is fed by the Feather River, is also extremely low. Um, I sometimes consider that dam... Uh, if it does break forth, to be connected to the 144,000 being birthed. Oroville does mean gold, and that was a center for gold rush. Like along the Feather River was like all kinds of feather, or I'm sorry, all kinds of feather, all kinds of gold um, uh, mining being done. So um, Oroville means gold. You have the town of Paradise. It's an interesting connection. The larger, more extravagant dam and a lot more attributed with prophecy, with being on the money, you know, with John Cleck. You also have, you know, the fallen angel, angel statues there. I mean, that's a much more, to me, in-your-face type of dam. So I attribute that for birthing the multitudes. Um, it's more famous. It's It supplies more power to more people, a vast number of multitudes. So anyway, it's just something that... Um, I felt obligated to add into that. So uh, take it for what it's worth. So in Joel 2.23, it says, Be glad, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten and the canker worm, caterpillar, palmer worm, and my great army which I sent among you. There's a lot here, guys. We could talk about these three verses for hours. Um, but what he's saying essentially is, this is how I think, okay? This is my opinion. Be glad, you children of Zion. These are the ones that are awake right now, the ones that are seeking the Lord diligently, wanting to... Um, to, uh, to wake the multitudes who are trying to wake the multitudes. They're the ones like you're, you're 
YouTube channels, the people praying for the lost. Uh, they're doing kingdom work. Uh, so he's saying, be glad and rejoice your Lord God, for he's given you the former reign moderately, which is the learning processes we went through. He will come to cause down for you know the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And I don't know about timing. I'm not even going to look at that. But um, this is the latter rain that we are anxiously awaiting to help awaken the multitudes. We are trying diligently to wake them, but they don't want to wake up. The soil is not prepared. Okay. Um, and the floor shall be full of wheat. This is a harvest. Okay. And I do believe there is going to be a certain period of time before quote unquote great tribulation all right that uh we will have a everything we need here there won't be any want we many people will hurt him but we won't especially trying to build the kingdom for god and all of course the things that we have had taken from us by the enemy whether it be family friends uh you know money houses homes um, uh, our health, all these things will be restored to the children of Zion and to those who they come in contact with and heal and, and, um, and bring them into the, uh, the fold. So again, you could talk about this extensively, but we're just going to focus on a couple little things here, but I wanted to go over that a little bit. The rain is teaching. The rain is teaching wisdom from the Lord. I remember doing this study once before when I was looking at who Adam was. The book of Genesis made it a point to say. Uh, every plant of the field was in the earth and every herb and every field and it grew. And the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist of the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord formed the man in the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. The Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. There was not a man to till the ground. There was a mist or fog upon the earth. Guys, this is exactly where we are right now. The soil is not worked. The soil is humanity. Also, it is this out west. It is this arid area, all right? On earth as it is in heaven. He's showing us in a bigger picture with this. Rain, archer, teaching, teacher, rain, teacher. He had not put a man on the earth to teach the multitudes, all right, the six-day atoms, the six-day humanity creation. There was not a man to work the ground. So on the eighth day, God brought Adam into the system. He was going to be the one to bring God to them. But of course, we know the story. All right. He failed. All right. Teacher, teaching, archer. Okay. Um, the curse had become too great. And now there's no thirst of living water. Okay. The mist came up and made the earth soft. All right. Not true rain. If you look at the word mist, and I studied this, okay, it comes back to like a fog. All right, humanity is living in this fog. All right, is Buddha God, is technology God, is, uh, you know, they're trying to look everywhere but the Bible. And I almost got mad and just said a naughty word there, but they're trying to look everywhere to find God, but the right place. So it's, it's, it, this mist is like almost not not a darkness but it's like a it's a fog it's it's a confusion okay on the ground this curse has become too great and therefore there is no thirst for living water the mist of the fog is not true rain humanity is needed living water water brings life to the desert Former rain, going back to these words, to flow as water, to lay, to throw, to shoot arrows, to figuratively to point out by aiming, to teach, archer, cast, direct, inform, instruct, shoot, teaching, throw, cast, set, shoot arrows, to throw water, rain, to be shot. 
To truly see this and understand God's arrows are the tribe of Ephraim, doubly fruitful is what Ephraim means. Teachers of the gospel in the kingdom of God, they will be brought forth and launched to the earth. These reflect Adam and Eve. They were doing before the curse. Okay, They were God's representatives into the system. And I've attached Tim Foster's study into the folder. Um, Ephraim as the arrows. Too exhausting to really replicate here, but I have included a couple verses that you can look up. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. My sword, my in the shadow of his hand, he has hid me. We've talked about the hidden ones all right, extensively. He's made me a polished shaft. In a quiver, he has hid me. When I have bent Judah for me, filled, my, filled the bow with Ephraim, and he raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece, and made, the, made thee as a sword of a mighty man. All right, this is going to war against the, the sons of Greece, all right, the fallen. Um, and the Lord shall see over them, and his arrows shall go forth as lightning. So the confirmation I received uh, in this message was uh, this verse that I got that day. Uh, then shall the lame man leap as in his heart. We're going to go to this chapter, actually. And I kind of want to read this. Um, let me pause it here. So this is the ver the chapter he gave me. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. Okay. Now, who are we talking about here? So let's 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 look at this real quick. So down here it talks about ears will be unstopped, a blind shall be open. So we're not talking necessarily about the lukewarm or the lost here. We're talking about the sons of Zion here, the 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 one forty four, the the workers in the field, the laborers. They're in the wilderness as well. Okay, kind of a different wilderness, but our wilderness is born out of frustration and just you know. Uh, his timing and trying to stay in his trying to stay with him anyway so this chapter this is because this is how the lord gave me that verse because this is how i was feeling just uh it just also very dry very uh yeah chapter 35 let's just read it the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad okay our joy is going to come just like it said in, in uh, Joel chapter 2, 23. Okay, they're going to rejoice. They've had the former rain. Okay, now they're going to get the latter rain. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. All right, the only other place this is used, it's actually rose. It's in Song of Psalms. All right. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and great singing. All right. That's us, guys. That's the ones that are watching. All right, and, and waiting on the Lord. The glory of Lebanon, this means heart, all right, shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord. All right, they're going to see him. The majesty of our God, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. So, we're going to get into this here in a second. But right now, come and save you. All right. Yeah, we're all in a bad place right now. We're all hurting. But uh, have you watched Israel? Okay. Just have you watched Israel the past weekend? We're going to come back to that. Don't uh, let me forget. He will come with a vengeance and recompense of your God. Then, then, key word, right? Once this starts to occur, all right, and these people are waking and they're singing in joy, then the eyes of the blind will be open and the ears will be unstopped and the lame man shall eat like a deer and the tongue of the mute will sing. For waters break forth in the wilderness. And streams in the desert. The burning sand shall what? Become a pool. And the thirsty ground springs of water. <laughs> Makes me want to go swimming. The hunt for the jackals where they lie down in the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there and it shall be called the highway of holiness. 
the unclean shall not overpass it. This is getting into the walking with the Lord and going the right direction, getting them on the right path. But anyway, guys, that's what I wanted to really focus on right there. He will come and save you. Arrows are synonymous with what? Missiles. Rockets. War. Make bright the arrows. Remember Jeremiah? Uh, when uh, Babylon was surrounding them. Uh, just something to keep in mind. I do believe we will see some sort of attack on our soil in conjunction with the rain, in conjunction with everything breaking forth, in conjunction with all of these things. It's all coming to a complete head. All right. So um, I get these notifications. I've gotten them. Like you can see 18 minutes, 18 minutes, 18 minutes. Um, I wake up and I mean, I look at the latest one. It was like 10 minutes ago. So it's like happened all night. So these rockets are hitting all night and day over there. I haven't looked at my phone in the past few hours, but at least it was when I checked a while ago. Uh, a friend sent me this link, um, POW Ponder the Weather, a huge storm coming, flash flood, very heavy rains, massive storm coming, heavy rainfall uh, with just a day a few hours ago. All right, so I don't know what, I haven't watched them just yet, but I, you know, trust the source and, and um, you know, so we could be seeing something very, very quickly. And um, so anyway... God bless you guys. And again, if I come up with anything else, I will let you know. But uh, God bless and take care.